But the thing that we really want to make sure we talk about in this age group, and you're bringing this up, is combined hormonal contraception. I'm, I'm glad you raised this, Peter. So confusing area also, right? And um, there's like people are very polar on this and very opinionated. Mm. But um, I think it's important not to recognize not just oral contraceptives, it's combined systemic hormonal contraception, right? So people take birth control pills, which have estrogen and progesterone. They also use patches like the Ortho Ever patch and the ring, like the, like the Nuva ring, right? Yep. And those combine, and there's a whole bunch of different types of these. But um, the, the, the idea here, what, what are you doing when you give contracept, hormonal contraception? You're turning off the brain and that um, feedback loop that makes you ovulate, sh you know, make a lining, shed it, and be able, to, be able to have a pregnancy and then shed it if you don't. And you're turning it all up by giving super high, high doses of hormones, right? So what happens, the short answer is with combined contraception, it's probably most noted in the research, is that a small percentage of women get that high level of estrogen, but the vulvovaginal mucosa doesn't recognize it, right? Mm. And you can develop a vestibulodynia, a vestibulitis, that particularly the, that the, the vestibule is that tissue around the entrance to the vagina, not so much inside the vagina, but that surrounding tissue called the vestibule, is very sensitive to the drop in these, the endogenous estradiol and the synthetic estrogen sometimes don't do their trick. And they can develop a vestibulodynia, meaning pain and dryness and almost look like a postmenopausal woman when it mm. comes to that. Um, it's, that's one issue, right, with or con contraception. It's, a, it's probably that number, you want a number, um, the, the work of some of my colleagues in this area who do like sexual pain and vestibulodynia work say it's somewhere around 10%. Um, Meaning 10% 10, 10 of women of that are receiving users. systemic, yeah, okay, who are Come receiving on. systemic And that is probably oh. similar with rings and patches, but it's not as well documented. And, and, and then there's some variability, like higher dose or, oral uh, contraceptives have been um, more likely, um, low, I'm sorry, the very low dose have been more likely implicated. And people do better if they have like more robust high dose, like sort of more standard 35 microgram pills, as opposed to these ultra low like the 20 micrograms. Like is low, low Those estrin considered low? Yes, yes, okay. that's an example. So the ultra low ones tend to be the biggest culprits. That said, um, the experts in the field feel this is very important for us to understand. The ordinary gynecologic community thinks it's it's relatively insignificant. Whether they're under detecting this particular piece of it or not is, is, is something that needs more development. The other issue with um, birth control pills is that it can have an effect on neurotransmitters. And sometimes women will develop mood issues with, as you probably know, with like high dose oral contraceptives. Um, and that may have an impact on the neurotransmitter milieu and the mix that leads to sexual dysfunction and low, low sex drive. So um, then finally, uh, and this is probably more important as women get a little older, and it might lead us into the discussion about testosterone, is that Birth, so, so, so three things. One is they can have an effect on the local vulvar tissue, right? If we have this issue, particularly the lowest dose estrogen. The other thing is it depends on the androgenicity of the birth control pill. Um, mm. That's not the, that's, that, that's yet another issue. Um, and there are androgen receptors in the vulvovaginal tissue. So that may change sensitivity or even lead to pain, that piece of it. The second thing is that, that interse intersection with brain neurotransmitters and mood and that effect on sexual function could also be clinically important. And then finally, and this is like, oh, like a whole nother thing, um, what do you do when you make all, send all that hormone into someone's body? You increase the production of SHBG, right? Yep. So, so you're binding goes, up more of the hormone right. as well. So, right, you need something, to, well, you, the easiest way to think about it is you need something to carry it around with, yep. right? And that SHBG goes up in other states like pregnancy, um, and you're, you might ask me, like, is it the same with birth control pills in pregnancy or when you take thyroid hormone? Any, there are other things that make that production of that go up. Yeah. Um, the data across situations is, can, like you could say, okay, it's like around 100 such with this or is not so clear. I think it's best just to say it makes it go up. Um, now, um, the, that is 100% of women. Like I get asked this question, like, does it matter? 100% of women have a higher SHBG if they take, for example, let's just say high dose birth control pills, right? Let's just stick to that for now. Everybody who takes it has that. And what does that do? So it, it, it helps carry it around, but it also, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, whatever you want, it's a, the fellow travelers androgens or testosterone gets carried by SHBG. 
So because you're increasing SHBG, there's some um, thinking that you're binding up the circulating testosterone and you may be lowering free testosterone in those women, and that might be another potential contributor to low desire. <laughs>